Hello everyone, I'm Sam Copeland. I'm a national master on the content team here at chess.com and I'm here today to show you an incredible game won by Leela Chess Zero against Stockfish 8 in the Evans Gambit. Now this game comes from a 200 game simulation match between these two engines that is designed to reproduce the famous 2017 match against Alpha Zero. In this 200 game simulation, Leela Chess Zero won 69 games. Nice. Against Stockfish 8's 5 games. Our estimation then is that Leela Chess Zero has continued to push the bounds for chess engines and is now significantly ahead of where Alpha Zero was in 2017. As said, this game opens with the Evans Gambit. That's e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, and now the famous pawn to b4. The idea of the Evans Gambit is that after bishop takes b4, c3, bishop a5, and d4, white has built a very nice pawn center. White has also done this while attacking this bishop on a5. White also has good development and access to more open lines. Now, the defensive task for a human player as black has always been very difficult, but modern opening analysis and reviews from engines like Stockfish have really questioned whether white has sufficient compensation. Could white just end up down a pawn? Now, in this game, we are going to see a less materialistic engine, Leela, demonstrate that it is possible to maintain compensation throughout the game if you are sufficiently creative. So in this game, we're going to see d6 from black and now queen b3 and queen d7. For a human player, this looks like a very suspicious defensive setup. Why does the queen want to be on d7? Is it so great here? Why is it blocking in the bishop on c8? But actually, we've seen this be a very successful defense, one of black's best. For example, after pawn takes e5, the best move here seems to be bishop b6. Fabiano Caruana, the number two player in the world, successfully used this to win a brilliant game against Grandmaster Nisipianu. In a lot of cases, black will give back the pawn, but complete development and have the bishop pair in an advantage. In this game, we see something a little different from Leela. We see knight to d2, bishop to b6, Pawn takes e5, and after pawn takes e5, Leela tries pawn to a4. White includes ideas of a5 here, and also bishop to a3, trying to get the most out of the queenside structure. Now, in this position, a very natural move played by Stockfish is knight to a5. After queen a2, a big question is, can you, should you, take the bishop on c4? In this game and in many games, that bishop on c4 is a very important part of white's counterplay. However, after knight takes c4, queen takes c4, white has a number of ideas. They include pawn to a5, knight takes e5, and bishop a3. It's not so easy for black to deal with all of these ideas. So the knight remains on a5. After queen a2, we see queen to e7. Now bishop a3, and the queen slides over to f6. This bishop looks very, very strong, but black's idea is just to play knight e7 and castle and say, I'm really just a pawn up, what are you gonna do? So in this position, we see castles, we see knight e7, black is ready to castle on the next move, and this is the time to pause your video and try to play like Leela Chess Zero. How can you maintain your initiative and keeps black king, keep black's king in the middle of the board? In this position, Leela drops a bomb on Stockfish 8. Knight takes e5, a brilliant and daring piece sacrifice. After queen takes e5, we see bishop takes f7 check and king f8. Now, the point is not so much to try to checkmate the exposed king. The king is actually relatively safe, inconveniently placed, but relatively safe. The point is much more subtle and positional. Black's pieces are struggling. How do you activate the rook on h8? What about the knight on e7? The knight on a5 on the rim? What about the other rook in the corner on a8? Now, these are all difficult questions, and in this game, we're going to see Stockfish really struggle to answer these questions. This is a theme you see over and over in Leela's games. Its pieces are well-placed, active, optimized. Meanwhile, it does a great job restricting its opponent's pieces. It's also not materialistic about this. It is willing to sacrifice, like in this brilliant game, to do this. So here we see bishop d5, and now pawn c6 attacking that bishop, knight f3 attacking the black queen, and after queen f6, this next move is my favorite in this game. 
I like knight takes e5 a lot, but I love rook a to e1. This move perfectly combines tactics and strategy, and I just always love to see the inactive rook on the a-file developed. So in this position, first off, you cannot capture the sacrifice bishop on d5. After pawn takes d5, we get e takes. There's pressure here on the pin knight, and if you defend, then d6 is super strong. If the knight moves, then d7, and you have murder on these diagonals. Very, very beautiful stuff. So after rook a to e1, the question, why have we blocked in this rook on f1? Couldn't we have put this rook on the e-file? Wouldn't that have been better? Wouldn't our pieces have had more scope in that case? Well, Leela is anticipating with this mysterious rook move that over the next few moves, lines are going to open up to advance the f-pawn. Then you're going to have a strong f and e-pawn supported by a strong f and e-rook. The course of the game shows that this is really the crux of White's idea. So after rook a e1, we see pawn h6, not a very convincing move. And now e5, queen f5, bishop to e4, queen f7, and queen c2. Already right around here, I'm suspecting that the game might be decisive for Leela. I just don't see very many options to contain white's initiative from here on out. After king g8, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, knight d4, the f pawn is getting ready to march up the board. We see pawn h5. And pawn f4, bishop e6, king h1, and bishop c4. I think this is another instructive moment. We see that Leela is not afraid to trade pieces as long as progress is being made. Many humans would be reluctant to give up the light squared bishop that looks to be a very strong piece. But after the trade here, the pawns are continuing up the board and all of the white pieces are really, really effective. So we see rook f8. Pawn to f5, now we have an idea of knight e6, so bishop takes d4 and pawn takes d4. The position is simplifying, but the pressure is not reducing. Black still has trouble with the knight on a5 and the rook on h8. Meanwhile, white's heavy pieces are amazing, as are these very strong centralized pawns. I'm seeing zeros from Stockfish, but again, I think that this is a decisive advantage. Pawn to b6, rook e3, rook h6. And now pawn to h3, very patient, ready to take time to make left so you're not getting back rank mated, so you can activate your pieces more fully. Now we see queen d7, rook g3, king h8, rook f to f3, and now queen e8, queen e3, knight c4, hitting the queen, and queen f4. With every move, the white pieces are just encroaching a little bit by little bit on the black position. We see rook to f7, now pawn to f6. You can't take because after the capture, this rook on h6 hangs. So that rook falls back very, very sadly to h7. Rook g6 encroaching again, and now pawn takes, and e takes f6. More lines are opening up. Pawn to h4, preventing at least the tripling of the heavy pieces for white on the g-file, and now rook f2, pawn to b5. I think that at this point, we're just seeing that Stockfish is struggling for any valid moves, and after pawn takes... We see that Stockfish realizes that pawn takes back allows rook e2. This is a sacrifice, but you can't accept because you get back rank mated. And after rook e2, then if the queen moves and gives up the e-file, you have rook e6. And then queen e4 and rook e8 is decisive. So at this point, after the capture on b5, I think that the game is just over. We see queen f8, and just a capture on c6, at this point, white is even... Actually, even on material and about to be ahead very, very soon, the position is just dominating. But in the computer chess championship, the engines play on to mate in every game, and so we see that here as well. The knight on e3 falls, and in a few moves, we're going to see the pawn on a2 fall as well. The maneuvers from Leela to convert this game are a little interesting as it's willing to give up pawns to make progress, but ultimately the game is never in question as it marches its pawns forward pushing on the c-file, and also being willing to create an initiative against the black king. Here c7, and then after rook takes, we see queen e5, which is really the finishing move. Here, if you try to stop the pawn's advance with rook f7, then rook e7 is just crushing. For example, queen to h5 is going to be mate. It is mate in 6 at most. So after queen e5, we see desperation from stockfish, spike checks. Uh, rook check, and then rook check again. The other rook also gives itself up. Unfortunately, the black queen can't give itself up, and after king h7, we see queen check, and then rook check, and 
mate. A crushing final position. I really hope that you enjoyed this game. I certainly did. And most of all, I'm really hoping that this will inspire you and maybe some other great players to try the Evans Gambit and be inspired by Leela. If you want to check out more games from Leela, then click on the playlist that is sitting right on top of your screen.